The Lord is good. Okay, let's open our Bibles to the book of Ephesians chapter 5. And let's round up this um, teaching for this week. So today we are today we are rounding off this teaching. Walking in love. We have uh, done five episodes or five uh, parts ahead. So this is the sixth and uh, final one for this uh, season. Ephesians chapter five. Verse 1 says, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. And walk, in, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. And we, so far we have learned that we have the capacity and the ability by the Holy Spirit in us to love. Without love, our faith cannot work effectively. Because faith works through love. And our service to God cannot be acceptable or profitable uh, if, we don't, if we don't do service in love. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the Bible says we should serve one another in love. It is, it, it is what we do by love and through love that God accepts. Amen. Paul said, if I give my own property and my own body to be burned, I give my own property, my belonging to feed the poor, and I have no love. That is, I don't do it in love. It's not love that is my motivation. He said, it profits me nothing. Because it is, it is possible to, to do to give, you know, bountifully, but not motivated by love. Of course, you know what I mean. Politicians do that. Politicians, politicians give. They are philanthropic. They go around giving. But it's not love. It's not that they love the people. They have their goal. To get what? The people's vote. It's not that they love the people. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we are to walk in love. And walking in love uh, empowers us to walk in forgiveness towards others. Because as a family, a church, we are not perfect. We are, we are all seeking, we are all striving towards perfection. Yes, we can step in on each other's toe. We can offend each other. And we must learn to forgive one another. If we don't forgive one another, we give Satan, we give Satan a platform against us. Hallelujah. Amen. But when we walk in love, forgiving one another, then our lives will become more effective. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Then we also said that love will make us to care for one another. Bear one another's burden. And we said, of course, when the Bible says we should help strangers, we should know the kind of strangers we are. So, and last week we said, in essence, that love is not self-seeking, it's not uh, 
selfish is not ambitious you know selfish ambition is not part of love love, love is not proud or arrogant Love is, not, love is not arrogant. He doesn't see himself, you know, better than others. Rather, he considers others of more or more honorable than himself. Amen. Today, by the grace of God, we'll go a step further. Today, we want to look at how uh, our love work will help our use of our Christian liberties. What do I mean by Christian liberty? Our freedom in Christ. You know, Christ has called us to freedom. We are free from the law. There are many things that the law condemns, which we have been free from. We, we are free. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And there are some things that many of us we grew up with, not because the Bible condemns it, but because the churches where we grew up in uh, condemn the use of those things. Amen. Amen. And uh, we have come to understand that we are free to use those things. We are very free. But the fact that we are free to use those things uh, does not mean that we should just be uh, selfish in our use of that freedom. Rather, we should consider others the weakness of others in the use of our freedom. Okay, let's read some scriptures. The book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. I read verse 13 to verse 15. Galatians chapter 5 verses um, 13 to 15. Paul the apostle speaking says for you were called to freedom that is to liberty brothers only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh but through love serve one another for the whole law is fulfilled in one word thou shall love your, you shall love your neighbor as yourself but if you bite and devour one another watch out that you are not consumed by one another <laughs> Amen. Now let's go to First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two. 
Now, let's look at what it says in verse 16 to 17. Verses, verses 16 and 17. First Peter chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. It says, this is Peter speaking, it says, live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Verse 17, honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, Honor the emperor. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I the, the scriptures make makes it known to us that. We have been called to live as free people. We are not under the law. For example, I know that some of us, we grew up in churches where trousers, the wearing of trousers is highly forbidden as a lady. It was, uh, uh, when we were there, it was highly condemned. And until today, those churches, there are many churches that do not permit the use of trousers. And some churches also have some food prohibition. Food, certain food. They don't. They don't. Regard it. Amen. Amen. But we have learned the gospel, and we know that we are not bound by those things. But we must be careful in the way we use our Christian liberty. Amen. Amen. Our Christian liberty, that is our Christian freedom. So that we do not abuse that freedom to make other people to stumble. We, we must be careful. We must consider the good and the well-being of others in the use of our freedom. And this is what Paul and I will, this is the issue Paul and Peter were addressing in those places we have read. And uh, Paul went, you know, he elaborated on this in First Corinthians chapter eight. First Corinthians chapter eight. First Corinthians chapter eight. I start reading from verse one. Uh, Paul picked a particular example. He picked an example. It's not the issue of dress now. He chose the issue of food offered to idols. Hallelujah. He says, now, concerning food offered to idols, we know, that is, we know, we all have knowledge, that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge pops up, but love builds up. Do you hear? You understand? Now, Paul is saying, look, concerning food offered to idols, we all have knowledge. So, but listen, knowledge make, can make you proud. But it is, it is only love that can build the body or build the church. Why did Paul even, uh, you know, write this particular chapter? You know, in the Corinthian churches, there were uh, Greeks, that is Gentiles, 
and there were Jews. There were those who have learned from Paul. They learned from Paul that, well, there's nothing in all those things. No, there's nothing like idol. There's nothing in idols. There are nothing. The idols are nothing. Like we say in modern language, the gods are dead. The gods are dead. They are nothing. So if somebody carry food now and go and carry food, prepare a nice bowl of uh, food, nice meat, fried meat or whatever, and you go and present it in front of one idol, and he says he's giving idol food. Paul says we know that that idol is nothing. It's nothing. Amen. Amen. So Paul knows that eating that food presented to the idol is not, is can do me nothing. It can't touch, can't touch me nothing. It can't affect us. It cannot defile me. But there were people who grew up in idol worship. They grew up there. And their understanding of the of Christ, of the faith, have not grown to that level of your own knowledge. Paul is saying that you that you have knowledge, be very careful how you exhibit your freedom. In eating that kind of food. Amen. Okay, so that I don't jump ahead of myself. Let me read the scripture. It's very clear. Just read it. Then I will talk after. It's a very long chapter from verse 1 to verse 13. I will just read it. So the airway people will bear with me. I don't know whether they'll be able to read it. Okay. But I believe you can read fast. So, okay, let's go. Now, verse 1. Now, concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge pops up. But love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence and that there is no God but one. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us, that is we, children of God in Christ, there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist. And one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom we, through whom are all things, and through whom we exist. However, this verse 7 now, however, not all possess this knowledge, but some, through former association with idols, eat food, that is, they eat the food as really offered to an idol. How are you following? And their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Verse 8. Food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this right, that is this freedom, this right of yours, does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged if his conscience is weak to eat food offered to idols? And so by your knowledge, this weak person is destroyed, the brother for whom Christ died. Thus, Sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Verse 13, therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. Can you read it with that speed? 
Ore to fa gba le gba nto ta eyi Fifi ala me ti be ma fo lo so dududu si wo to sa fo e na to ro la oti Me ni e be lo ni ale mi ta ta ni asi ka ke lo ni de wo na na pe ame to a ke do pe ji ke no ya de wo to a ame do ne ame a le bu be ye ya ye ni ala le la me ni me ni wo te e te fe ke ka re o kene ame a le ro ma wula ma o ti si ke ya ma a so le nu nu si wo to sa fo e na to o du du mu ti la me ni me ni ale ni a te fe me be to ka de ke me le ke a me o e ye ma o bu a de ke ha me ni o ma o de ka ho we li ye ya to bo be a me a de wo o se be ma wo wo pe a ke to wo le ti fo o pe a ni ba e ye le wo bo la ma wo wo pe a ke to wo so ko fun ha la le ni a wo ya ni a go me la ma o de ka ho we li e ya e ni fo fo la amesia amesime mu o ka ta jojo e ye e ya e ni le a me la ni ni ma ke a ke to le ka ho ko e ni e ya e ni yesu christo amesi ji mu amesi ji mu o ka ta to ba jo e ye ni a wo ha je le a gbe to e ya ma me le ni a te fe me la a me ke de o me ni anu si a nu si a ale a o e si wo ni e tro su bo su bo de wo na a me a de wo de wo ma a me a de wo fe fi e ba se de fi fi a bo ha ta la ne wo du nu du si wo cho sa fo e na tro wo la e wo na na wo a de de wo tu e sa fo na le ba ke de e la be wo fe ti ti ni a me se wo o me ni e du du a na ni a je ma wo wo o ne ni e gbe ni du du ne ni e gbe na ne du du la me gbe na ne ke de ni a wo ti o e de ma ke de ni e du ni ha la me to ni a wo me to de ni a wo ngole go ade ke be o de ko de ko mi ni po ni e be abro de si ni e po ale ara na da ma su nu dia nu nu da dia na ale si wo nu se me le o la o e la be ka si a mi po ale ade si pe ji si ni ale se un o po po wo ale si ni a ale si ni anu si wo le 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 nu dum le trope de wo nu wo na si a ma de ji bo ne ma de ji bo na ale bo le si a be e ya ha na ti be ya du nu du du si wo cho sa fo e na le ka o a ale nu si go me le be ye se ha fi wo afi wola na be ale blessi a tro e vola no viwo no viwo si a no vi si a no viwo si a ta kristo kuro ale be le wo fo de no vi wo o se ton e ye ne ne de abi e pe ti ti ya wo e si a wo po e si wo po jo ta la e wo e si wo po jo ta la e wo fo de kristo o ku bi eto ya e ya ta ne ne be nu si ma du a na no vi ye na wo nu fo la e ke ma ne ma du ro a po o ne me ye ne ne o la ma va na no vi ye na wo nu fo amen thank you my brother hallelujah amen praise the lord i hope we we all heard the reading at least in english and in our local dialect so it's clear amen amen that we have christian liberty that's what paul is teaching we are free food offered to idol is on is food is nothing hello hi if they are doing uh, what they call it uh, this festival they do here in this town uh -huh. if they are doing things like that whatever food they are eating there it has no 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 power over me if i can go there i can eat it or in the village even if they carry the animal kill it in front of uh, the the idol and slaughter it and offer the blood there and i they 
fry the meat, cook it. And I will eat it, nothing will do me. Because there is no God in those things. They, they have no power over me. I'm living under a better covenant. Praise the Lord. Now, I must be very careful the way I use my freedom. Why is it that you don't see me running after the New Year Festival Parade? Why don't you see me jumping around with them and eating or go to them and be you know, eating? Why do I abstain from it? It's not because if I eat anything they do there that it will help it to affect me. But I gave up that freedom, that liberty which I have in Christ for the sake of those who are still weak in the faith. Amen. Amen. Why? Because there are people who are coming to the church or people in town who know me as a man of God, as a Christian, and they have not, they have not learned the gospel truths. Their conscience has not accepted the fact that that thing is zero. They have not seen it. They have not, they have not really understood it. They have not. So if I go and I'm eating food offered to idols and they see me eating things like that, they still have the idea, the mentality, the belief that, oh, that idol is real, that idol is powerful, that idol, they are told that if, they, if you eat that food, you will prosper. So they will think that pastor is also eating it so that he too can what benefit from that idol. So by my action, I will mislead that other person to feel like, ah, so this thing is good, though. we can all do it. So he will eat it with the mentality of idol. That idol, this idol, when we eat this food, oh, ah, it will prosper us, it will protect us. He will eat it with that mentality, with that belief. I'm eating it not with that belief. I'm eating it because is nothing. But he is eating it with that thing he still eats because he has, been, he has been associated with idol for a long time. So he is eating it with a wrong understanding. And that will destroy him because he will keep eating it with that understanding and that will destroy him. Destroy him means it will ruin his, his conscience. He will keep seeing it as something he can do anyhow with that wrong understanding. And by my use of freedom, I have destroyed that brother. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, because of my time, I will not be able to go to all the scriptures I, will, I want us to read. So as they are, they are old chapter readings, like Romans chapter 14. is the old chapter. So you can write it down, Romans 14. It's the old chapter. Just read it. Read it. Read it. Romans chapter 14. So write it down. Then we will write down also 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse, uh, from verse 20. Um, uh, we read from verse 23. To verse 33. Amen. Amen. You know, what Paul is teaching is very clear. Now, see, 
I am free as a Christian. I can eat anything. I can drink anything. It doesn't define me. I can wear any kind of cloth. It doesn't define me. Are you following me? Hello? Hi. But I will not use those things, not because if I use them, it will affect me, but because I, I walk in love towards my fellow brothers who have not grown in knowledge to my level, I will not use my right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For example, uh, let me take another example. Please pay attention very well. And if you don't understand, ask me questions. So that you don't think I'm a, I am endorsing what I'm about to say. For, ex for example, there is no place, you cannot use this Bible from Genesis to Revelation to teach or to command a Christian not to drink. That is alcohol. The Bible, there's no place in the Bible that says Christians should not drink alcohol. There's no place. There's no place. In fact, there are many, many places where the Bible talks about people drinking alcohol. People of God, including Christians. For example, the communion wine, what people call communion wine. Um, Amen. Amen. The communion wine, hello, that was drunk in, in the whole, in the early churches, yeah. were not. Uh -huh. It was not. It was not so bolo or fanta. It was real intoxicating wine. Real one. Because the Bible says that some went home hungry, other people went home drunk. So all those things, all those religious church arguments and say uh, uh, communion wine, communion wine must not be alcoholic. It's a lie. It's a lie. The communion wine of those days were alcoholic. And uh, the water that Jesus turned to wine was not Coke and Fanta. The wine was real wine. It, it, was, uh, it was wine. The kind of wine they serve in Jewish wedding. Alcoholic. I'm sure some people went home drunk that day. Because the wine was sweet. It was better. Because the person said this wine is better than the other one. Are you, are you listening? Hello, are you there? Yes. Now, even though the Bible does not condemn the use of alcohol, the drinking of alcohol, we are free. We are free. There's God will not condemn me if I take a, a bottle of club lager and I open and I drink it. There's no, condemn, I don't, there's no condemnation for me. No. There's no condemnation. Honestly. 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 There's no condemnation. No. Oh, I can test you and I drink it. There's no condemnation. But you know why... I will not drink it. Or why I don't drink them? Why I don't drink alcohol? The reason is this. Apart from the fact of consecration to the service of God, apart from consecration, that is dedication to the work of God. Because the Bible in the whole testament, God commanded the children of Israel, the, the uh, the Levites and the, the priests. He didn't say they must not drink. He said when they are about to come to serve to the tent of meeting to serve, they must not drink. So any, any priest that was going to offer the sacrifice must not drink. That he must not be intoxicated. He could drink any other time, but once he knows he's going to the altar, he must not drink. Because some of the sons of uh, Aaron, they drank and went to the altar. And uh, while they, they got there, because they were intoxicated, they made mistake. They took wrong fire. 
They took fire from the wrong place, offered it, and the fire, the, the angel of the Lord struck them dead. The two of them instantly set them on fire, oh, burned them to death. Oh, now, hallelujah. Amen. I know that Paul the Apostle instructed Timothy. He said, don't only drink water, but drink a little wine because of your often infirmities. And of course, I, I know that when Paul said that, he was not talking about drinking Fanta and Coke. No, he's not talking about Zobolo. He's talking about real things, something like acquisition. Are you listening? Alcoholic. But why don't I drink it? I don't drink it because it has the power to dominate. To rule people. And if you see me drinking, there are many of you who were brought up drinking. Many, many of you had the habit of drinking. You, be, you were drunkards. You drink. You drink excessively. Now, when you now see pastor drinking, ah, you say, ah, glory to God. Hey, hey. So this is okay. Ah, no problem. So you will now start drinking. You throw away caution. I can start drinking. You drink. And you say, well, Jesus turned water to wine. Then you begin to drink as you like. And by that drinking, because you saw me drink, I may be I may be self-controlled, I drink maybe once. But because you are the thin day your body before. Because the thin day your body. Ah, you only saw as I take one 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 thought or what do you call that? So he's a, but you now say, ah, you can buy one gallon. And start drinking. Say yes. Ah, we are free. That is wrong. The Bible says if you do that, you make your brother to stumble. That is, you destroy your brother. And that means you are not walking in love. So I don't want any of you or anybody to because of me stumble. I don't want anybody to because of me go into destruction. Some who have been trying to be free from alcohol, free from all those things, because they, they know the evil work that they have been doing in their lives, in their families, between them and their husband, between them and their children. It has, dis- it has ruined their life. The habit has ruined their lives. Now, if they now see me drinking, then that will empower them, it will encourage them. That's what Paul was saying. In that first, look at it again, that first Corinthians chapter 8, look at verse 10. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge, you have knowledge, that of course there's no condemnation in drinking alcohol. I have that knowledge. If he sees you who have knowledge, Eating in an idol's temple. You now see me go to a clubhouse, or you see me in a, what's the name of that popular place? Yeah. Mirage. And I'll go there in the night and I'll sit down, put one leg on the table, order drink, and I'm drinking and say I'm relaxing. He says, he says will he? Will he not be encouraged if his conscience is weak to eat food over to idols? So the other brother or sister, hello, who is weak, who is still struggling with the habit. Now he now sees me. Ah, he now says, ah, so it's good to go to Mirage. No problem. So he will not stop at Mirage. He will go to the other one too. And uh, by my, by my, 
by the exhi exhibition of my liberty, I have destroyed that brother's life. We, we must be careful how we use our liberty. You are a Christian sister. Of course, you know there's nothing wrong in wearing trousers. There's, you are free to wear trousers. Whatever type, you are free. But you must be careful the way you wear it. Amen. Amen. So that you don't become a stumbling block to your brothers. You don't just ex you don't just exhibit your freedom carelessly. For example, uh, Sister Janet wants to go and greet uh, Brother Johnson. Then Sister Janet now wears a very tight trousers, uh, off shoulder top or what blouse or tight feet showing all the shape and everything showing the cleavages and everything very very you know and he wants to greet hello let me ask you is sister Janet not free to wear those clothes hello I'm talking to her is she not free hello is she not free She's free. She's free. There's no condemnation. But in wearing that cloth to Brother Johnson's house, hello? Hi. I'm not saying hello, I say alone. Now, nah, he, he goes alone. So go and greet, bro. Ah. You want to put fire on petrol. You want to put Brother Johnson in trouble. Hello? Hi. It's, it's bad. So, though you are free, but be careful how you use your freedom. Don't abuse that freedom and then wear provocative, dress provocatively, and say you are going to greet your fiancé, that you are not yet married, though. you are not married, you now wear provocatively, you are not yet joined, now wear provocative, and then you went, you say you are greeting God. Now that kind of thing will, miss, will, will, will set bro, Johnson's body on, mind on fire, his body on fire, and if he, now this brother is the kind of brother that before he came to Christ, he was he had little self control, you know, when it comes to ladies. Oh my god. When a lady dresses like that to his room, he believes the lady is asking for sex. So he believes you are asking for it, and before you know it, he might be tempted to rape you. And you say, Bro Johnson raped me. Ah, it's not Bro Johnson who raped you. You called for it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the sister must be careful how she uses her freedom. It's not that you cannot wear trousers or wear any of those clothes. You, wear, you can wear them. They are free. You are free. But be very careful how you use your freedom. Amen. Amen. And there are some uh, churches. Listen, pay attention. There are some churches where they don't believe in wearing trousers. Hello? Hi. If I and my wife were invited to any of those kind of churches where they don't wear, they don't agree, we will not, I will not tell my wife, wear trousers and let's go and show them. No? We will res love, respect other people. We will respect them. For their sake, in love, we will not wear trousers. I will tell her to wear skirt. In fact, they big one cry. So that they can we can have freedom there. Hello? Hallelujah. We will not want to offend them. 
we respect their we respect their doctrine. Amen. Hallelujah. If somebody invites me now in a white, you know, like this, uh, what do they call that church? Revelation, Revela, Revela, Apostle Revelation, or something like that. Yes. They invite me to come and preach there. And I must wear that white thing they wear. No, I will wear it. For their sake, I will wear it. To me, it means nothing. I will wear it. If they ask me to remove my shoe, I will remove it. As least as they allow me to come and preach, I will preach. I will lay hand on them and cast out demons. I will not say, ah, if you cannot allow me to wear my ordinary clothes, I cannot come. Oh, no, no, no. I have the opportunity to come and preach Jesus to you. I will wear... Listen, there are Christians who went to villages to preach where they say, you, before you can enter our town, you must be naked. I know people who did it. They did it. They went naked. Both men and women, brothers and sisters. They went naked, stuck naked, no pants, nothing. Carried their Bible alone and went to that village in the thick forest in Nigeria. They went there and they preached to them. Naked. So, so for the sake of the gospel, we can sacrifice our freedom. That's what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For the sake of the of the gospel. And for the sake of the edification of the weak in the church. Okay. Here, here am I live, we want to cook, so we are cooking. We are cooking as a group. We want to have a, 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 a get together. And here is one of us, one or two of us who don't like eating pork meat. They, 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 they come from a church like ARS. They, that's where they came from. They were born again. But they grew up in ARS church and think, you know other churches like that. Are you following me? Who see upon the law of Moses? You know those things. And they don't believe in eating pork. So now they are, we want to eat together. Now we are, they, are, they are born again, but they have not come to the full knowledge of the gospel like us. Now we want to eat together. We will not say because uh, we are free in Christ. So we're not going to fill the whole pot with what? Pork meat. Say so you must eat it by force. No, we don't do that. That's wrong. You must respect that person's level of knowledge. You don't go and put pork meat in the whole pot. Respect that person. You sacrifice your freedom for that person. Because if the person says, Oh, I cannot start, and the person refuses to eat, and he says, hey, hey, That's you. That's you. Ah, there's nothing wrong in eating pork meat. We are all free to eat. Hey, if you like, don't eat. Don't eat. That is not love. That's, love doesn't talk like that. Love doesn't talk like that. That's why Paul said, I would rather not eat meat. If eating meat will make my brother stumble to be offended, I not eat it. Okay. Let's go to Romans. Amen. Let's go to Romans 14. Let me read. I'll read something from there quickly. Amen. I, I, I think I gave us Romans 14 to go home and read. Uh, please make sure you take it seriously and read it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I, I want to read from uh, verse 13. Verse 13. Romans 14 from verse 13. It says, Therefore, let us not pass judgment on one another any longer, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother. I know and I am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself, but it is unclean to anyone who thinks he is unclean. Verse 15. For if your brother is grieved by what you eat, 
you are no longer walking in love. But by what you eat, do not, do not destroy the one for whom Christ died. To destroy means don't make that brother to get offended. Respect him. Verse 16. So do not let what you regard as good be spoken of as evil. Verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Verse 18. Whoever serves Christ is whoever does serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by men. So then let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbring upbuilding. Do not, for the sake of food or dress or drink, hello. Hi. Do not, for the sake of those things, destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for anyone to make another stumble by what he eats or what he wears or what he drinks. Amen? Amen. It is good not to eat meat or drink wine, or do anything that causes your brother to stumble. The faith that you have, keep it to yourself. Keep it between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who has no reason to pass judgment on himself for what he approves. Verse 23. But whoever has doubts is condemned if he eats, because the eating is not from faith. For whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. Hallelujah. Now, you can see clearly what Paul is explaining, is teaching. That, listen, nothing, hello, look at Paul, nothing is unclean. You are free. You are very free. To eat, to drink, to wear anything, you are free. Is that bad? Be careful how you use your freedom. Peter says, don't use your freedom as a cover-up for what evil. Some people, some people are alcoholics. You know what I mean by alcoholic? They themselves are alcoholic. Amen? They are not drinking it like what Paul told Timothy, maybe for, medic, for medicinal value. They are, they are they are indulging. They now use this freedom to indulge in drinking alcohol. They indulge in it. Hello? Imagine now if uh, my brother now say, oh, oh, one of our sisters or brothers now say, he now gets to, uh, he now say, oh, we can, we can drink. Oh, the Bible is not against drinking. We can drink. And then he begins to drink and drink and drink and drink. Then the younger ones in the church now say, ah, this is a, a minister, one of our pastors drinking. And he say, ah, and he even boasting and say, oh, in our church there's nothing, they say there's not, everything is clean. That kind of expression of liberty is wrong. It's irresponsible expression of liberty. It doesn't show responsibility. Because there are people who are struggling with alcohol. Now you encourage them to go deeper into it. And that's why. Hello. 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 That's why. As a Christian, as, as a person, as a, I, I abstain from it. I abstain from it. It's not that if I drink it, God will know. I abstain from it for the sake of the gospel. I, I, I abstain from it for the sake of the gospel. Amen. Amen. How will you like it if I came here and I'm, I'm, I'm topsy? You know what it means to be topsy. <laughs> or my body is smelling of cigarettes. <laughs> or it's smelling of weed. Or it's smelling <laughs> of black Ah. Ah. I will disrespect myself. 
then I will I will give Satan opportunity to destroy people because they see that ah they will be encouraged to do bad things. So while we are growing together in our knowledge, we must be careful how we use liberty. We should not dress recklessly or irresponsibly in the church or when we go to visit each other, especially brothers and sisters. Be very careful how you dress. That's how in some of these modern day churches, I don't want to mention names, where, you know, he operate churches where they are free, they say we are, they, they, they over, they over express that liberty. You see, bro, the sister will be wearing tight thing and you know, you go to brother's home and that's why you keep hearing stories of fornication, fornication. They are fornicating among them. Why? Because though they are free, truly, but they are abusing that freedom. Amen. All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. Let no one seek his own good. Don't just say, oh, this thing looks fine on me. Because it looks fine on you. Don't just think about yourself. Think about the weak among us. Consider sisters as you are dressing. Eh? Consider the bro that you want to go and greet. Don't, 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 don't put a stumbling, a stumbling block in front of that brother by your dressing. Be very careful so that we don't destroy uh, the work of God. Amen. Amen. We must be, we must walk in love. Paul says when you behave like that, you behave recklessly, you just throw your freedom in people's face, then you are not walking in love. You are not walking in love. Between you, are, between you and your husband, when you are married, you can wear anything you like. If you like, walk naked in the room, nobody. Who cares? It's your right. But, be, but please, be careful how you dress. So that you don't abuse, you don't create problem for others. Amen. Amen. This is the end of our teaching for today. So we are free in Christ. But we should not abuse our freedom. We should not abuse it. Amen. Don't go around and be drinking and say, oh, pastor said eh, you are free to drink. No. Though you are free, but that drinking is not, it's not helpful to you. Many people have died of kidney problems because of drinking and smoking, lungs, kidney. Marriages have been destroyed because of one partner is a drunkard. So abstain from it. If you don't drink, if you don't drink, does it mean you will not live a good life? Just for the sake of the gospel, just leave it. Leave it. Sports people, people who do sport because of the sport career, they don't drink all these things that you drink. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They sacrifice their pleasure and their freedom for their football, for their football or sports career. The same thing for us as believers. For the sake of the gospel, we sacrifice our freedom. And that's why if I, when I go out to preach and I see people drinking, I don't condemn them. I don't now start preaching. I don't, I don't start preaching against drinking. No, I tell them about the love of God. I, they are struggling with the things, so I don't go there to condemn them for drinking. I did, and when some believers go foolishly and they start condemning people because they are drinking, they start condemning them for their drinking, 
then you will see this day to week, they will they will become defensive. I'll start quoting Bible for you because you are, you went on the wrong thing. You yeah, went to condemn them. No. And you, and you cannot and you cannot argue those scriptures they quote for you. So rather tell them about the love of God. When they receive Christ and they begin to take in the knowledge of Christ and they continue in prayer and fellowship with the saints, the power of that evil habit of drinking or smoking and all those things will be broken. And they will be free from it. And for their sake, we that are, that are mature, we will not be drinking or do anything like that. So that we don't encourage them to fall back into sin. We sacrifice our freedom for their sake. I hope it's clear now. Let's be on our feet to pray. I want us to thank God for the freedom we have in Christ. Let's appreciate God for the freedom we have in Him. And let's pray and tell the Lord, Oh Lord, help me to walk in love towards my fellow brothers and sisters so that I do not become a stumbling block to them in the way I use my freedom. Oh Lord, help me to walk in love as a sister towards the brothers and as a brother towards the sisters. You two that you are brother, don't go and be wearing those and be showing your six pack. You want to you want the sisters to see you. And, and you want to be showing your six pack and be saying, I, I, I get I get six pack. No, be very careful how you use your freedom. Dress properly. Dress well. Do things the right way. Don't put a stumbling block before the brothers or the sisters. In what you eat, in what you drink. Be very careful. And don't use your freedom as a cover-up for evil, for, your, for, for sin. You are still struggling with uh, alcoholism. You are still struggling with alcoholism. Now, you, you, because you heard that the Bible says, oh, there's nothing wrong. Ah, so you now begin to drink. That's foolishness. That's foolishness. And don't use this one and say, ah, because the, the Bible, the pastor has told us from the Bible that it doesn't. You now be indulging in it properly. No, I did not tell you that. I've shown you the true, the liberty of, of Christ. But don't abuse your liberty. Because all things are lawful. But not all things are helpful. All things are lawful. But it's not everything that abuse us. Pray in the name of Jesus. 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 Lord, help me to continue to walk in love. Never to be a stumbling block in the path of the brethren. I will never be a stumbling block in the path of the brethren. I will never be a stumbling block. Satan will not Satan will not see me. He will not find me an instrument in his hand. I will be a responsible believer in everything I do, in the way I talk, in the places I go, in the kinds of music I listen to. I'm careful so that I will not be a stumbling block to others. I receive your grace, Lord. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus.